everyone, welcome to our Crazy Life Scotland, it's Fiona here and this video is a simple guide to starting the ketogenic diet. Now I've been doing the keto diet since the start of April, so almost four months now and I am loving it. I'm by no means an expert but I have done a lot of research and I seem to be doing quite well on it. And the tips that I'm going to give you, I actually gave to my mum a few months ago um, because she wanted to start it and she's getting on great with it as well. So I thought it might be an idea to share these tips just for people who maybe don't know anything about the keto diet but have heard of it and want to give it a go. Or for people who have heard of it, they know a little bit about it but they just don't know where to start. Hopefully some people will find this useful. Right. Basically, what the ketogenic diet is, is it changes your body from burning sugar to burning fat. A bit like if anybody's old enough to remember, like me, when cars used to run on the old style petrol before unleaded came in, they had to bring in a catalytic converter to allow them to run on unleaded petrol. So I kind of think of the, of the keto diet as the catalytic converter that changes your body from burning sugar to burning fat. And the way that it does that is it reduces a hormone in your body called insulin. Now basically every time you eat, especially carbohydrates, your glucose levels go up, which means your insulin goes up and your insulin basically tells all the cells in your body that there's glucose in the bloodstream and to take it in. Any glucose that isn't taken in by the cells gets stored in your liver as glycogen ready for future use. However, if you keep eating sugar and the insulin keeps coming out saying, take in all the sugar cells, the cells take in what they can and even more gets stored in the liver and more gets stored in the liver and as that piles up, that's how we end up putting weight on. Insulin is also the fat storing hormone, so every time insulin is produced, we have the ability to start storing fat. Now, obviously, we don't want to store fat, especially if we're trying to lose weight. So what the ketogenic diet does is it takes the majority of carbohydrates out of your diet so that you're not getting many glucose spikes and then you're not getting too much insulin sent out from your pancreas and that way you don't store as much fat. Not only that, because you're not taking in as much glucose, your body still needs to burn something and your body soon learns that it actually works really, really well burning fat. In fact, with your brain being mostly fat, your brain works better burning fat than when you're burning sugar and a lot of people on the keto diet find that they get a lot less brain fog, they can think a lot clearer, they're a lot more productive and that's the reason why your brain actually prefers your body burning fat to burning sugar. So that's the mechanism behind the ketogenic diet and obviously when your body is burning fat you're losing fat not gaining it and that's how it helps you lose weight. Now, the ketogenic diet isn't only used for losing weight, that is a lovely side effect of it, but in some people, they use it to try to minimise insulin resistance, which is basically when too much insulin goes around your body because the cells don't hear it anymore, telling them to take the glucose in, so more insulin gets produced for the cells to hear them. So it's basically a build up of insulin constantly going around your body and a lot of us are insulin resistant without even knowing it. Especially those of us who store a lot of fat around our bellies, that can be a sign of insulin resistance. Now, type 2 diabetes can result from insulin resistance, so the ketogenic diet is also used a lot for type 2 diabetes. But then when you get further into it, it's also used for neurological conditions such as epilepsy and I am trying to use it to reduce the chronic pain in my feet that I have from a neurological condition known as neuropathy. And then when you get even further into it, there are studies that show that the ketogenic diet can actually help to 
not cure cancer but prevent it or to alleviate a lot of the symptoms or stop it getting worse when it's actually when you actually have cancer and that's because cancer cells need sugar to burn it cancer cells need sugar to grow and if you're not giving your body sugar the cancer cells aren't getting a chance to grow as quickly because they've not got the fuel that they need so that's a very quick, basic rundown of what the ketogenic diet is. It's obviously a lot more complicated than that, but for this video, that's all we need to know. So where do you start if you want to try the ketogenic diet? My first tip is to forget everything that you've already been told about diets. So the majority of us have been told to lose weight, you need to drop your calories and you need to eat low fat. No, that's not the case in the ketogenic diet. I know a lot of people do go by that, but when you're on the ketogenic diet, that's not the case at all. So you need to forget about that. And the reason you need to forget about it is the ketogenic diet is mainly a fat-based diet. Because you're reducing your carbohydrates right down, you're taking in a lot of fat. And a lot of people find it very difficult at first because they're thinking, I can't have that much butter or oh, I better not add cheese to that or cream in my coffee. I can't do that because we're so brainwashed into thinking that fat is bad for us. Fat's not bad for us. And in particular, saturated animal fat is good for us. It's not bad for us. So don't worry about that side of it. So forget everything, even your calories. Don't think about your calories at the moment. Just concentrate on getting those fat levels up and your carbohydrate levels down. And I'll talk a bit more about that later on. So tip number one, forget everything you've already learned. Tip number two is think carbs. Because we want to reduce carbs out of our diet, we need to figure out where all the carbs are. So every time you're going to eat something, think, is there carbs in this? And I'm talking before you even start the keto diet, just to get your head around where all the carbohydrates are. Now, we all know that they're in obvious places such as sugar. Okay, so refined sugar and anything that's got refined sugar in it. So your chocolate, your biscuits, um, that sort of thing. Also, most of us know that there's a lot of carbs in wheat. So bread, cereals, anything like that, cakes, they've all got a lot of carbs in them. Then you've got some veg that has carbs in, potatoes, carrots. You've got your pasta and your noodles and your rice. You've got even your what we've, we've been told are healthy grains. So your couscous and your quinoa, they've all got carbohydrates in them. So it's time to start identifying your carbs wherever they are and think when you're eating something, even before you start the ketogenic diet. If you're unsure, have a look at the ingredients. The ingredients will say something like wheat flour, sugar, dextrose, um, maltodextrin. There's so many different words for sugar that we need to be careful of. And then look at the nutritional information. And I would look per 100 grams rather than looking on the front of the packet. You know how it's got the sort of traffic light system on the front of the packet. It's not always very clear what portion size they're talking about. So I would always look on the back and look at the per 100 grams, how many carbohydrates has it got. So that's a good way to start identifying your carbohydrates. You also need to think about the fact that there's carbohydrates in healthy foods such as fruit and veg. So fruit has a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of natural sugar, but even although it's natural, it's still sugar. Okay, so the likes of bananas, apples, oranges, um, kiwi fruit, grapes, they're all really high in sugar. The lower sugar fruits are like your berries. So strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. You can have a small amount of those on the ketogenic diet, but you do need to remember they have got carbs in them. So you need to limit them a little bit. Also tomatoes, whether you count them as a fruit or a veg. Tomatoes you can have on keto, but you need to be careful because they are a fruit. They are quite high in carbs. So you can have tomatoes, but really, really limit them. Don't splash them all over your plate like you were told to do when you were losing weight the old fashioned way. Also, um, avocado, <coughs> excuse me, avocado, 
is a fruit. However, you can have them on the ketogenic diet because they've got so many healthy fats in them and they're very low in carbs. So you can have avocado. And like I said earlier, your veg, especially veg that's grown underground, be very careful of. Always check it before you have it. Later on in this video, I will go through, I will put up some pictures and basically talk through them, telling you the best things that you can have to eat. So don't worry about that too much just now. Tip number three, fat, fat, fat. You need to have your fat. I can't stress this enough. The proper ratios for a ketogenic diet are 70% fat, 5% carbohydrates and 25% protein. So yeah, that's a lot of fat that you need to be getting in your diet. However, make sure it's healthy fat, okay? So healthy fats, we're talking about your dairy. So cream, butter, cheese, eggs. We're also talking your avocado, which I mentioned. Meat, your salmon is very good, very good healthy fat. And when you're buying meat, try to get the fattier cuts of meat, not the low fat. So when you're buying mince, go for the full fat mince, not the less than 5% fat. And you're halfway there. Once you get your mind into the fact that I can have this fat, I want to get the fattiest cut of meat. I want the full fat mince. I want the full fat cream. I don't want reduced fat cream. And I want double cream, extra thick double cream because that's got the most fat in it. Once you get your head around that, this diet is a doddle. When it comes to cooking, please, please, please do not use the oils that you have been told are healthy. None of your sunflower oil, none of your rapeseed oil, none of your basically unsaturated oil that comes as a liquid. You want to be using butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, lard, beef dripping. Yeah, lard and beef dripping. I remember my gran cooking with those years and years ago. I didn't know you could still get them, but you can. And do you know what? They are so cheap. It's brilliant. They are so good for you for cooking. So please, please, please throw away any of the old oil that you've got that's the liquid form. The way that I think of it is, if you can easily squeeze something and get oil out of it, it's good. Okay, so olives you can squeeze, coconuts you can squeeze and get the oil. Um, butter you just need to reduce down uh, by heat and you get the oil. However, have you ever tried to squeeze a sunflower to get oil out of it? It's not going to happen because it has to be processed a hundred gazillion times in order to actually get oil from it. That in itself tells you it's not good. If it's not natural, it's not healthy. And the amount of inflammation in your body that those oils cause. So please, please stay away from them. Don't be scared of saturated fat. Now, cholesterol is something that everybody's told to be scared of when it comes to fat. Do not worry about that. I will make another video telling you why you don't need to worry about it. But all you need to know when you're starting the keto diet is do not worry about cholesterol. Eat your healthy fat. Now, tip number four is quite a controversial one to some people. But in my opinion, in my experience, and my mum's experience, tip number four would be forget your macros. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, a macro is simply how food is broken down into carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and also the calories. All the things that you look at in traditional diets. I'm saying, at the beginning, do not worry about these. As you get further into the ketogenic diet and you get more comfortable um, with what you can eat and how to eat, then you can start looking at your macros. And I am going to do a follow-up video to this to tell you how to do all that. But at the moment, when you're just starting, don't worry about your macros. The only macro you need to think about is how much carbohydrate you're taking in. If you keep your carbohydrate level to less than 20 grams a day, you're well on your way to doing well on the ketogenic diet. That is the place to start. Don't worry about 70% fat, 25% um, protein. Worry about keeping your 
carbohydrates below 20 grams a day. So at the start, that's all I would count. Don't worry about the other numbers. Look at how many carbohydrates are in what you're eating and note it down. Just make sure that that level doesn't go over 20 grams. Now, there's two ways of doing this. Some people like to reduce them slowly. Some people panic that if they take all the carbs out of their diet straight away, they're never going to survive and they know that they're setting themselves up for failure. If you're one of those people, reduce it slowly. Start by taking all the sweets, chocolate, crisps, bread out of your diet. Once you've done that, then take away your potatoes, your pasta, your rice, your carrots, that sort of thing. And then once you're fully in the zone, take away the rest of the carbs, okay? So you might want to do this over a few weeks. And if that's the case, that's fine. Don't beat yourself up about it. You're going in the right direction. You're making the right decisions. It's just going to take you a little bit longer to get there. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's on your, their own journey. I would much rather you reduce your carbohydrates slowly in a way that you're comfortable with so that you can actually sustain the ketogenic lifestyle rather than cutting them all out altogether, going cold turkey. If you're not that kind of person, you're going to fail and nobody wants that. That doesn't help anyone. However, if you're not that kind of person, if you can, if you do think you can go cold turkey, then do it. That's what I did. That's what my mum did. We were the kind of people that were like, right, I'm just going to rip that band-aid off. You know, I was an all or nothing person. I either eat all the carbs or I eat no carbs. That's the way that I decided to do it. That's the way that my mum did it. And it worked great for us. It means that you get into ketosis quicker. Now, ketosis, don't worry about this word. It basically just means that your body is starting to burn fat rather than sugar. Okay, so ketosis is a good thing. Do not confuse it with the word ketoacidosis, which is a dangerous health condition that diabetics get. Don't confuse it with that. It's not the same thing at all. Ketosis is good. Okay, so it's up to you which way you want to do it. Now, tip number five is a very, very important one. Tip number five is take your supplements. Now, by supplements, I mainly mean electrolytes. Our body naturally has electrolytes in it, which we all need. All the cells need electrolytes to work properly. And that's like your sodium and potassium and magnesium and things like that. What happens when you first reduce your carbohydrate levels is you let go of a lot of water that's in your body. You pee it out, basically. And as you pee out that water, you're also peeing out electrolytes. So it's very important for your body that you take the electrolytes back in in a supplement form. If you don't do this, you are likely to feel ill. Now, a lot of people call it the keto flu. I simply call it sugar withdrawal because that is basically what it is. If you think about it, an alcoholic suddenly cutting all alcohol out or a drug addict suddenly having no drugs whatsoever, they're going to feel ill. Their body goes into withdrawal and they get shaky and they, they feel awful. It's the same with sugar because sugar is an addiction. I don't care how anybody else sugar coats it, sugar is an addiction. So when you suddenly cut sugar out your body, your body can't cope because it loses the electrolytes. So when you give your body the electrolytes that it needs, it helps your body to cope better. You may still get the odd headache, you might get a wee bit shaky, you might just feel a wee bit kind of lightheaded and not right, but it will pass. That's your body trying to change from burning the sugar to burning the fat. As soon as your body learns to burn the fat, and the more fat you give it at the start, the easier it is for your body to say, oh, there's plenty of fat here, and start burning it. And then when you're not giving it fat, it then realises there's still plenty of fat in your body, so it uses that instead. So don't worry about it. As long as you're taking your supplements, you will be okay. And the reason they call it the keto flu is because it does feel a bit flu-like. You do get similar sort of flu symptoms, but it does pass as long as you're taking your supplements. Now, I'm not saying that to try to make money in any way. I'm not affiliated with anybody. However, I will leave the link to the electrolytes that I buy um, from Amazon in the description below. Not because I get money, because I don't, but just to give you an example of the sort of thing that you're looking for. 
you can't you don't need to get them from Amazon you can get them from Holland and Barrett you can probably get them from most pharmacies to be honest so definitely take them what I take is every day I take an electrolyte supplement that's got all the electrolytes in it I take a magnesium supplement and I take a vitamin D supplement and the reason I take that is I live in Scotland and let's face it we don't see the sun very often and when we do I'm not out and about very often being in the wheelchair it's a bit awkward I'm not out and about all the time in the sunshine so I take a vitamin D supplement I'm not saying everybody has to but for me I like to take it so that's what I take as long as you take your electrolytes you can do your own research to find out if there's any other supplements that you want to take tip number seven use the internet and social media YouTube here is fantastic for getting help with the ketogenic diet there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of keto vloggers out there however the majority of them are American which can be frustrating because in America they can get all sorts of keto products that we can't get here in the UK and especially when you're starting that can be a little bit frustrating however there are a couple of really good UK based keto vloggers the two in particular that I like to follow are Keto Christina now she is Irish but she lives now in France I think that sort of area I'm not sure if it's France or Italy I think it's France and she is also studying to become I think a nutritionist based on the ketogenic diet not normal diets and she's fantastic she's really really good I'll put her link below and also you have Ginger's Keto in the UK now Ginger is just the loveliest woman you'll ever watch. She is originally from Italy and now lives in Wales. So she does have a very strong Italian accent, which I love. I could listen to it all day long. It's fantastic. So yeah, she's got a very strong Italian accent and she is quite flamboyant when she does her videos, which again, I love. A lot of people might not quite so much, but please try and get past it because the information she has is amazing. Again, she is studying nutrition. She's studying all things keto. She brings out science-based videos, which are easy to understand, but she also does a lot of good recipe videos. So I'll link her below as well. They're two really good UK-based UK UK keto vloggers that I would recommend. However, there's also other American ones. Um, Ken D. Berry, he is a, a doctor. He's amazing. He's got some really good things um, on his channel. You also get the likes of Dr. Berg, um, I used to like him. I'm not so keen on him now because I feel that every video he does is trying to sell something. Um, and that does put me off a bit. Um, but they're definitely worth watching. Now also you've got Instagram. Plenty of keto people on Instagram posting pictures of their food, posting pictures of like diagrams of things that you can eat, posting things about the science of keto. So Instagram's an excellent place to go. And there are quite a lot of British keto people on Instagram. Also, Facebook has loads of different things. Facebook has different support groups for keto, but also keto in the UK in particular. And also, there is a Facebook page called Keto Products UK. And that's my friend Lindsay who runs that page. She is fantastic. And she basically, like me, got frustrated that she couldn't get a lot of the keto products here in the UK. So she imports a lot from America. So we can buy them here in the UK from her. I will link that page below as well. I've done some reviews on this channel of products that I've bought from her page. And um, she's excellent. She's really good. If there's anything you're wanting, she'll try her best to get it for you. They do tend to be a little bit more expensive, but that's because they're coming from America. Um, she doesn't make a lot of money on them at all. So if you're looking for keto products, go to that Facebook page. Tell her I sent you. Why not? My last and final tip before I go into what you really can and can't eat is keep it simple. I can't stress that enough. In the beginning, keep it simple. Just stick to the easy ingredients that you can get in the supermarket. Make what you can with them. Use the likes of Pinterest. That's another excellent internet based resource that you can use. Pinterest is great for recipes. You can get really complicated recipes. 
ignore those at the start but you also get very simple like slow cooker recipes just for the ketogenic diet so that's excellent stick to simple recipes at the beginning you do get keto versions of bread of cakes of uh, pancakes of pizza of macaroni cheese you get keto versions of pretty much everything so don't worry about the fact that you're going on keto and you think you'll never get any of your favorite things again you can you just need to make them keto tied is that a word keto fied i don't know but you can actually do it but what i'm saying is at the start don't don't get yourself bogged down with things like that just get your head around the easy to cook few ingredient simple meals and then you can start looking at that further down the line, please. And like I say, with your macros, don't worry about it. Don't complicate things. Just stick to making sure your carbohydrates are less than 20 grams a day. That's enough. Trust me. And this, at the start, trying to get your head around all of these things, all of the things that have got carbs in them that you never would have thought would have carbs in them. All the fat that you need to eat, even although you're terrified to eat it because you've been told not to. All the things that you should be eating because you've been told they're so healthy for you. All this fruit that suddenly you're not eating. That is a lot to get your head around at the start. So please, please, please keep it simple in the beginning. Once you get further into it, you can watch the next video that I'm going to make at some point during Vlogist that will tell you where to go from there. But at the start, I can't stress enough, simple is best. Like I say, if you feel that you can't live without the sweet treats, instead of trying to make them yourself with the coconut flour and the almond flour and the psyllium husk and all these other expensive ingredients, just go to the likes of Lindsay's Facebook page and get some keto products that are sweet but you know they're safe on the ketogenic diet that would be my advice you can get cookies there you can get sort of chocolate bars protein bars there that's the kind of thing that you want to do at the start rather than trying to make your own and stressing yourself out it's not worth it right so those are my main tips for starting the ketogenic diet Number one, sorry I'm looking down, I've got my notes here and I don't want to miss anything out. So number one, forget everything you've already been told about how to lose weight. You don't want to count calories and you don't want to eat low fat. Number two, think carbs. Every, every kind of food you think about or look at, think about whether it's got carbs in it. And that just gets you into the right mindset before you actually start the ketogenic diet. Number three, fat, fat, fat. Eat your healthy fat. Throw away your unsaturated um, sunflower oils and things like that. Ob obviously, uh, <laughs> I know olive oil is unsaturated, but that is healthy because you can squeeze the olive and you can get that oil. So that's fine. But anything you can't squeeze to get oil, get rid of it. Number four, forget your macros. Think about less than 20 grams of carbs a day and that's it. Don't worry about any of the rest of it in the beginning. Number five, supplements. Take your electrolytes. You may want to start taking them a few days before you start the ketogenic diet. That way you know that you've got plenty of electrolytes in your body before you start peeing them out. They're properly in your system. You don't have to do that, but that's what I did. That's what my mum did. And we had very little sugar withdrawal. So that to me is a good idea. Number six, use the internet and social media. Use YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all of those things. There's great websites out there, great um, blogs as well that are really, really useful. But if you're into using the internet, please do. Number seven, keep it simple. Okay, so although I'm telling you to use all these resources on the internet, don't get bogged down in all the complicated recipes that you need to buy all these really strange ingredients for. Don't get too bogged down in all the sciencey videos and things that are out there. You can if you want, but if you're not that type of person, don't worry about them. The likes of Ken Berry, he is excellent for telling you in a really simple, straightforward way. So he's really quite good to watch, but you do get some other um, vloggers out there. Thomas DeLauer is one. He is lovely, but he's very scientific in how he talks. So... I would maybe stay clear of people like that at the start and keep your food simple. 
that's my main tips. Right, so that is the end of my tips. Now you're probably thinking, okay Fiona, you've told us what I can't eat, what can I eat? Now I am going to put in some photos and I'll just do a voiceover telling you basically what the photo's telling you, the sort of things that you can eat, okay, and the things that you shouldn't eat, and also the things that you, sh you can drink and that you shouldn't drink. And then I will come back on after I've done that and end this video. First of all, meat and protein. You can have beef, poultry, pork, including bacon, you can have lamb, you can have eggs, you can have seafood such as tuna, salmon, cod, prawns, crab, but be careful of crab sticks because they've got sugar in them. And be careful of processed meats in general, especially things like sausages because they do have a lot of fillers in them which contain different starches and flours and things like that. Now on to dairy, you can have hard cheeses such as parmesan and cheddar, soft cheeses, mozzarella, brie, that sort of thing, cream cheese, you can have cream, make sure it's double cream or extra thick double cream or clotted cream, you can have sour cream or creme fraiche, you can have mayonnaise, preferably the avocado oil mayonnaise. You can have nut milk, but not normal cow's milk. So the likes of your unsweetened almond milks or coconut milks. And you can have plain yogurt, but make sure that it's plain, not flavored, and make sure all of your dairy is full fat and not low fat. Fats and oils, you can have coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, like I say, all the things you can squeeze. You can have butter or ghee. You can have lard, beef dripping, all those lovely things. But please, please, please keep away from your vegetable oil, such as sunflower oil. I've already mentioned it, but I can't stress it enough. Now, good old veg. The keto diet is not all about bacon and eggs. We are allowed some vegetables. So your green leafy veg is great. Your lettuce, kale, spinach. You can have celery, asparagus, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, cucumber, radish, mushrooms, and a very small amount of onion. Just be careful with that because it is quite carby. Now on to fruit. You can have avocado, very, very good for you. You can have a small amount of berries, just remember to limit them because they are quite carby. And that's your strawberries, raspberries, blueberries and blackberries. And again, a very small amount of tomatoes because they are really quite carby. Nuts can be a good snack. Now the nuts with the fewest carbs are pecans, Brazil nuts and macadamia nuts. Then you've got your more sort of medium carbs, your hazelnuts, walnuts, peanuts, pine nuts and almonds. And then your really quite high nuts that you want to avoid are pistachios and cashews. Now you can't have sugar, but you can have some sweeteners. Your best ones are stevia or truvia that I use, sucralose, erythritol, Aspartame and acetylfin K, also known as ACE K, they're not overly good for you, but they are keto friendly. So these are the sweeteners to look for on your labels. The ones to avoid, however, are maltitol, xylitol and sorbitol. They're sugar alcohols and they do have a high glycemic index, which means they do spike your glucose levels quite a bit. These are normally found on your supermarket shelf um, sugar-free items, so just be very, very careful. Oh look, a picture of me. <laughs> I wish I had a waist that small. Right, what drinks can we have on the keto diet? You can obviously have water. It can be plain water, sparkling water, mineral water, flavoured water. Just be careful of the sweetener. You can have tea and coffee, but don't use cow's milk in it. You can use your unsweetened nut milks or you can use cream in your coffee. You can have diet sodas. Just be careful of the fruity ones in case they've got fruit juice from concentrate in them. 
you can have hot cocoa, now not hot chocolate straight off the shelf. I mean, you can get some unsweetened cocoa powder and add that to warm cream or nut milk to make yourself a hot cocoa. Stay away from fruit juices and from diluting juice, which is made from concentrated fruit juices, and stay away from alcohol in the beginning. I'll talk more about that in the follow-up video. Can we have snacks on the keto diet? Well, I'm glad you asked. Yes, we can. You can actually have chocolate, but the darker the better. I would say probably 85% plus dark chocolate. You don't need an awful lot of it just to give you that chocolate fix. It's very tasty. You can also have like cold meat from the supermarket. Um, it's a good on the go snack if you're out and about and you're hungry. Some ham or roast beef, that sort of thing. Just be careful, don't get the breaded ham. Um, and be careful of anything flavoured like with sweet chilli, that sort of thing. And you can also have the keto snacks I was talking about earlier, like Quest bars and cookies, that sort of thing that you can get online, especially from Lindsay on Facebook. Remember, we need to avoid refined sugars like in sweets and also floury things like bread and cakes and your pasta, rice, grains and starchy veg such as potatoes. Okay, so now you know the foods that you can have, the foods that you can avoid and the same with drinks. Let me just quickly give an example of how you make sure you're getting your fat in and some protein in. Although I'm telling you not to worry about your macros, still make sure, just don't count them, but still make sure that you have got some protein and a lot of fat. So for example, say for lunch you wanted to have an omelette. I would fry my omelette in butter. I would maybe add some mushrooms to my omelette because they're excellent for you. They're fantastic on keto because I've not got a lot of carbs in them and they really help to bulk up your meals and make them very tasty. If you want, you can fry your mushrooms in garlic butter before you add them to your omelette. That's very tasty. Even when you're making your omelette, when you're whisking your eggs, add some cream to it or add some cream cheese and that helps to get some fat in and fry it in butter or olive oil, whatever you prefer, or lard or beef dripping. And I would normally serve that, you can serve it with some salad if you like salad. And if you like a dressing on your salad normally, you can add some olive oil or you can add some mayonnaise, preferably avocado oil mayonnaise, although that's very difficult to get hold of here in the UK. Um, you can have normal mayonnaise, but that has got a lot of your horrible vegetable oils in it. But it's better than nothing. And yeah, that's a lovely lunch for you. If you're not wanting salad, you can serve it on its own. Or you can serve it with some, I like some spinach fried in butter with a bit of cream added to it. So it's like creamed spinach. So yeah, or you can have it with other keto veg. It's up to you. Now for a nice meal at night, you could have, um, I'm trying to think one of the meals that I've had recently that I really like, gammon steak. Have a gammon steak, again fried in your healthy fat, have it with a nice fried egg on top, not pineapple, pineapple's bad, fried egg, good. So have it with a nice fried egg and you can serve it with some broccoli or some cauliflower or I like courgette, um, basically done in olive oil in the oven. That's lovely. Any sort of veg that's keto friendly. But again, there's not an awful lot of fat in that meal. So to your veg, I would add a big knob of butter or I would add some cheese or some olive oil again. Always think about adding fat. You can have vegetables in a limited amount, but always think of them as a vessel for eating your fat. So your mushrooms fry in butter, garlic butter or cream and your other veg drown in olive oil or butter or cheese. So they're good ways of getting your fat in. Another nice meal is salmon. Um, I do my salmon in the oven with some lemon juice. You can have a small amount of lemon juice and some garlic. And I have that with asparagus. And again, I'll have a big knob of butter on the salmon when I'm cooking it and a big knob of butter on the asparagus at the side as well. And it's so tasty. 
don't worry about the fact that your portions of your side dishes, if you like it, your vegetables are quite small. As long as you're getting enough fat on them, you're going to feel full. Don't worry about it. And breakfasts, I didn't mention breakfast. I forget about breakfast because I do intermittent fasting. But breakfast, at the start, keep it simple. Bacon and eggs, perfect. A, a bit of a fry up, bacon, eggs. Um, don't have beans or toast with it, that's not good. There are some sausages that are quite low in carbs. Your heck, 97% pork sausages, they're quite low in carbs. You could have two of them with it. Um, I like to do a breakfast casserole, which is basically bacon, mushrooms and egg, all put in the oven and cooked together and that's lovely. So avocado, oh, I forgot about the avocado. We can't do that, avocado's brilliant. Have that on the side of anything, have it on its own. Avocado is so good for you. A lot of people eat a full avocado a day on the keto diet. I tend to have half because that's what I like. But if you like avocado, go for it. Just don't mash it on toast. That's not good. Um, so that's some examples of how you can get your fat in as well as some protein. And if you stick to those, you will be laughing. Snack wise, if you want a snack, there are certain nuts that you can have, which I've already shown you. You could even have just a tablespoon of peanut butter if you're that way inclined. I quite like that. Um, you can have a small amount of berries with loads of double cream or even better, clotted cream. Oh, so good. Um, there's loads of things I like as a snack. If I'm hungry but not too hungry, I like to get some of the ready-made chicken stock from Asda. I think you get it in Tesco as well that you'll see in my shopping hauls. It's got zero grams of everything in it. It's perfect. I add a knob of butter to that, I add some cream to it and put it in the microwave and it's an excellent chicken soup, well, keto version of a chicken soup. So there's so much out there that you can do. You do get recipe books out there, there's some excellent keto recipe books, there's some excellent keto recipe websites, but like I say, Pinterest does it for me. I like Pinterest, but keep it simple at the start. Right, I'm going to go now. If there's any questions that you have, at all, please ask. Please don't feel like you're annoying me or pestering me by asking questions. That's what I'm here for. I'm happy to answer any questions that you like. There's no such thing as a stupid question, especially when you're starting the keto diet because it's mind blowing. But hopefully these tips will make it easier for you. If you're not comfortable asking your question in the comments below, you'll find my email address and my not Snapchat, I don't do Snapchat, I'm way too old for that. My Instagram handle in the description below and you can also contact me either through Instagram or email as well. I am more than happy to talk to you and help you in any way I can. I promise I am not going to get annoyed at answering questions. And I, if I don't answer them straight away, it's because I'm busy with the kids being on holiday or because my internet is rubbish. It's down just now again. Um, so don't worry, I will always get back to you. So I think that's it. Like I say, I will make a follow-up video to this about what to do once you're more comfortable with it, how to start tracking your macros, how to tell if you're in ketosis, the best methods to use, um, things like that. But I don't want to complicate things any more than I already have. I hope I've kept it simple for you. If I have used any jargon that you don't understand, please let me know and I'll explain it further for you. Right, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this useful. If you think someone else would find it useful, please feel free to share this video and please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!